Right. But going back to the fight, the, the thing was to hit low kicks. Kick, kick in low kick, and not even a hard kick to knock him out, but to disturb, to uh, get his attention down. Okay. And I think in the first round, and I was in the audience at this point, this is the first UFC, me and my wife are there in the audience, we're like, this is nuts, look yeah, at all these people. Was like, like UFC 80 something. Uh, I don't even remember. I think it was 69. 69, 69 yeah. Um, anyway, he's doing the fight, and I think the referee stopped the fight and warned George for kicking the inside leg. You know, oh, yeah, because he got he got two of them to right. the groin. Yeah. Right, but that and my my prayer in the audience was George, don't stop the game plan. Right. Kick the leg, no matter what the referee said, how close it went to the groin, kick the leg again. Because they weren't in use of that inside leg kick that much yet. Right, but I just needed George to sell it. Right. I'm like, you have to keep selling it low. If you don't sell it low, his arms aren't going to drop. You're not going to get the head kick. It's UFC 65. Yeah. 65 is it? Mm -hmm. Right. So my, to me in the audience, I'm like, you're not going to get that head kick unless you keep selling low, selling low. And what George did, he got the warning from the referee and then he did, like when the referee pulled him up, like you said, mm -hmm. the first thing he does is a leg kick again. And I was like, yes, he's still selling it. <laughs> he's not gone away from it yet. And then a couple of seconds down the line, then he went with the head kick and he got the knockout. Like but he had to stick. If When the referee said to him, Oh, you hit the groin, you hit the groin. George could have stopped doing that leg kick and it wouldn't have made the opening what we were trying to make. Right. But we'd worked on all that in the, in the training. So for me, I was like, just stick to the game plan, please. Stick to it, stick to it. And he did. He got the knockout. After that, when they had the, 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 um, in the, the, the what's it called? The, the talk after the, oh, the, the post fight press conference. The post fight press, uh, they talked to Matt Hughes and they said to him, you know, Matt, did he kick you in the groin? He's like, no, nah, he didn't kick me in the groin. He said it was just hurting. My leg was hurting like crazy. Uh, right. So I just put my hands up to stop it. He said, and yeah, referee warned him, but I didn't, he didn't hit the groin. But for me, that was the perfect setup for that head kick, finished the fight, became the champion. What do you think of MMA? Face. What did you think of it? As an art form, what did you think of it as becoming popular? In, in I, I didn't American necessarily, form? I thought that me and George at the time, my style, um, my feints, my being tricky, my way of thinking, and just thinking, faking a head kick, kind of like my style, but looking like a head kick into a takedown. Right. It was just, it just revitalized like what I did as an art. It was like, whoa, like, I still love Thai boxing. This is my love, but now I'm I'm evolving with so, this other sport, using what I love, and growing that too. So what happened was you would I guess brainstorm with other athletes about where Thai fit in, what worked, what didn't work. Or well, not 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 necessarily. I kind of watched the, the the cage fighting. I was like, oh, he he's gonna take him down. Like he could have fainted a kick there first before he did that takedown. Now he right. could have. Um, through a knee and change it into an elbow. Well, that immediately makes me think of Frankie and BJ. Yeah. Because Frankie all of a sudden was doing these great kicks against BJ and it really did throw BJ off. Well, even the BJ fight, um, that was a switch kick. Yeah. I can tell you exactly the move I worked on for Frankie to take BJ down. And when it happened, as a coach, it's just like, yes! That's what we did. And it, it opened the door. It was just one head game that we kind of worked with right it took bj down i remember watching the fight later on and joe Rogan was like oh my god i can't believe bj pants on the floor frankie took him down with a leg kick and it was just a switch kick leg kick thing that we'd been doing and trying to sell and bj bought it now with that particular fight the the switch kick is a tie is, a, is known as a switch kick right. but we switched it and switched it back again now, depending on the fighter you're fighting, some fighters are smart fighters. Mm -hmm. And you've got to know that. As a, as a coach, you, you're picking the other fighter's brain and you're picking the fighter's coach brain. You're not just punching. So for me, that's why we switched it and switched it back. Because we knew when we switched it... BJ would try to block. Well, he would try to block, but he would... He's too smart to get away with just a basic switch kick. Yeah, right. adapt to it. He's going to adapt, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay... If you're fighting, I don't know, this guy, Joe Blow, whoever it is, you get away with one switch kick and take him down. BJ is a little smarter. You're going to have to switch it and switch it back. And he's going to adapt for the first thing, but the second thing is what's going to catch him. Okay. 
and, and that's what happened. The BJ um, Frankie took him down, and then he won that belt. You know. And so now you start liking MMA. Oh, I'm I'm love it. at this point. It's like we're like years ahead of everybody. I'm thinking. For me, I'm thinking where I am, and where I'm I'm not looking at just winning a fight. I'm looking at the head games, right. and how to. And it, it was all working. It was all working. Like you said about Frankie, you said about um, Joe St. Pierre, looking at uh, uh, John Jones, the same thing with him. You know, his spinning elbow was something that it was just like, pretend you're going to do this and keep catching and being involved standing. The last thing they're going to think is you to spin with an elbow. But the funny thing is people eventually knew that John Jones was going to throw spinning elbows, but they just couldn't stop them. Well, you see, it's it's a timing thing too. Right. It's where you push, where you lean, where, what what you trying to. It, well, going back to that, you are saying that everybody knew George was going to throw the Superman punch. Mm -hmm. but nobody ever stopped stop it. it. No. Even George questioned me on that. He even said to me, "But coach, they're going to know the Superman punch is coming." I'm like George, they're not going to be able to stop it. <laughs> the George St. Pierre imitation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to be able to stop it. They're not going to be able to stop it. I'm telling you now, George. I have so many like tree branches to that Superman punch. Right. They're not going to know what's coming next. They're going to, they, yeah, they might, We. I could go over a bunch of George's fights with this, but just going from the Matt Hughes fight was a Superman punch. He used it in there. Mm -hmm. Going back to the Koscheck fight, he was concerned, oh, Koscheck, Koscheck's going to see the Superman punch coming. I'm like, yeah, but well, he's going to move from the Superman punch, but then that's when you're going to have a leg kick like after. Yeah. And that's going to be, he's going to run from the punch, but the kick's going to hit. And when they don't run from and I could go over a bunch of those fights. Well, where it was that up jab, really, that did some beautiful work against Koscheck. Well, it depends which fight you're talking about. The first one, no? No. Well, what's the one that he broke his the orbital bone? The only one that they had, he broke his orbital bone. Yeah. That, that wasn't the first one. The first one was when he did the Superman punch and the leg kick. Right. That was the Superman punch, leg kick, Superman uh -huh. punch, leg kick. Then further down the line, he fought Koscheck again. And Koscheck at that point in his career was turning into like the big overhand right yeah. swinging yeah. hooping yeah. punch. And that's what he was doing then. And what we did for that fight was he's going to be swinging a big bomb of a right hand. We need to keep your left hand up as a shield to stop that punch coming over and over the top. Keep that left hand up as a shield. And then, now this is the technical side to a fight, you're going to drop your left arm slightly out of vision from, the, from Koscheck. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking, like this is when you, you're not doing what you're supposed to do. So if I'm fighting with my hands are here, you can see my jab. Right. You can see my cross. If I drop this to here, you're still looking at my face. You're not going to see my jab coming When he up. says here, he means like dropping it towards the side. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily right down, but just enough out of your... So, right. You know, out of the peripheral vision. So, right. So just to, just to let the opponent know that you dropped your hand. Right. So now Koscheck doesn't see it. Right. He's looking in the eye, and if the hand was here, he would see this jab. It's dropped out. He's not seeing it anymore. Right. So that's what George did. He kept it down and just kept bringing it up, bringing it up, bringing it up. And Koscheck was so fixated on this big right hand and head hunting, let me put it like that. Kept getting popped. It kept coming up through the middle and he didn't see it. And all it was is drop your left hand slightly out of his vision or out of his like the peripheral. Not down at your knees, but yeah. you know, it's, it's, a, it's a science of like fighting and like you're going to do the wrong thing and this is what's going to open him up. What did you but think that's of what it did. Combat?